morning. Welcome to the Bible reading. If you have the Bible, look at the book of Jephaniah. Jephaniah, he started working uh, from BC 640. BC 640 to 630. Around the 10 years he was working um, as a prophet in the southern Israel and Jerusalem. Especially this man, Jephaniah, He speak about the um, people of Israel, they worship the idols, uh, they need to repent of the sins. Otherwise, God will destroy. And then, and the good news is uh, Jephaniah chapter 3 about the restoration. You know, God is a God of restoration. God is a God of second chance. He gives us a restoration and second chance. And then, um, yeah, if you look at the chapter 1 verse 2, Do you know what God say? I will ship away everything from the face of the earth, declares the law. I will ship uh, away the man and animals. I will ship away the bird of the air and the fish of the sea. The wicked will have only heaps of the level. When I cut off the man from the face of the earth, declares the law. When was it when God destroyed the whole world by water? Noah. Was Noah's time. Noah's, Noah's, Noah's time. Mm-hmm. You know, God destroyed the whole world by the water, by flood. I'll ship away everything from the face of the earth by water. But what kind of judgment when God judges again, the yeah, whole world is a water by or by fire? Fire. Yes. fire? fire, fire, fire. Which is uh, more dangerous? Fire, fire. More, it burn everything. Burn everything. But this is going to happen. And then, yeah, therefore, we have to be careful. Look at the Javania chapter 1, verse 7. Be silent before the seventh Lord. For the day of the Lord is near. The Lord has prepared a sacrifice. He has uh, consecrated the Lord. Lord He has invited. Do you know what God wants to do? God wants to destroy it. But before God, they must uh, you know, prepare for the sacrifice. But uh, do you know what God said? If you look at verse 6, yeah, Jephaniah chapter 1, verse 6, those who turn back from the following the law. This is the main problem. It's a backslide. Yeah, don't turn back from the Lord of Almighty God. Never run away from Almighty God. Do you, do you understand? They don't follow Jesus. That is why they trouble. And neither seek the Lord while inquiring of Him. They don't seek in God. They don't inquire anything. Nothing to do with God. They are like the just uh, totally separate. I myself, uh, I never have any any commitment with Jesus. I never have any any connection with Jesus. Therefore, I, I did whatever I like. I was a terrible, simple man. But look at the Jephaniah chapter 1, verse 12. At the time, I will search Jerusalem with the lambs and punish those who are complacent and who are like the wine left on it the dregs. Who think? Yeah, these kind of people, they, 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 they'll be damaged. Who thinks? Anybody think like this? The Lord will do nothing, either good or bad. Is that correct? No. No. God is in control. Yes. Yeah, God is in control. But they say, no, the Lord is going to do nothing. That kind of attitude is a very, very dangerous attitude. They never fear God. Yeah who think the Lord will do nothing, either good or bad. These kind of people, they, know, they never any connection with Almighty God. Their wealth will be plundered. Their, whole, their houses are demolished. Yeah? They will blind, sorry, they will build a house, but not live in them. How terrible, they build a very nice house, but they don't live in them. <laughs> they spend the money and energy. Nothing. They will plant the veg- uh, vineyard, but no, not drink the wine. Have you seen this kind of people? 
you're working very hard for, for nothing. Never any uh, beneficial. Verse 15, that day will be a day of blood. That day, a day of distress and anguish. Can you imagine this kind of things happening, especially in time? In Old Testament, yeah, sometimes we speak about the uh, end time, yeah, anguish, anguish, the day of wrath, day of distress for non-Christian, a day of trouble and ruin, and day of darkness and gloom, a day of cloud and the uh, blackness, a day of trumpet and battle cry against the fortress. Uh, sorry, fortified cities against the corner towers. And do you know what God say? I will bring distress, distress on the people and they will work like a blind man because they have sinned against the law. Do you understand? If anybody against the law, their life what? Yeah? Who will against them? God. God, God himself. God himself. God himself. It's up to you. Do you want to live in suffering? Yeah. Commit the sins. Do you want to live in darkness? Continue to do whatever you like. It's suffering. Brother Guan, since you came to our church last month, how do you feel? You, you feel much better, yeah? Spiritually. Spiritually, mentally, every area, you are very blessed, yeah? Yeah. yeah? This is, you can enjoy the heaven. Except uh, bad bug, but <laughs> did you understand? This is enjoy the heaven. Heaven is not far away. Heaven is where? Well. Where is heaven? In us. Within God. us. Within yeah, us. the kingdom of God within us, not somewhere. Yeah, I I, I was very encouraging today. Sister um, Sister Losa came to the morning outreach at seven thirty. And she preached the gospel. Do you know how many souls came to know Jesus through her? Eleven. Eleven. Eleven souls. <laughs> Do you know? <laughs> if she if she continually believe in the believe in the, in the uh, believe in the Maria and the Roman Catholic, you never have this kind of blessing. Do you understand? You are born again and follow Jesus and share the good news of Lord Jesus. How wonderful! This is beautiful. Yeah. But look. These people, uh, look at the verse 18. Neither their silver nor their gold will be able to save them on the day of the Lord's wrath. Yes, yes, it's possible or not? No. It's not possible. Their silver and gold is, a, is ruined. Terrible. On the day of the Lord's uh, wrath. In the fire of their, his jealous, the whole world will be consumed. Who's jealous? God. God's jealous. Do you know that God is a God of a jealous? Yeah, God is jealous God. Why God is jealous God? Because he wants uh, you to praise him. Yeah, you have to praise him, him and love him and follow him. Why? Because God made us in his image. Yeah, God is a jealous God. The whole world will be consumed because of God is jealous. God's jealous. He will make a sudden end, and all who live in the earth. Yeah. This is what the Lord God say. But verse two is a very, very important uh, message for all of us. Do you know? Even while God judge and then um, bring the wrath for all the people in this world, but God is God of justice. God is God of grace and mercy. The mercy of the Lord come upon the people. Yeah, come upon the people. Yeah. Look at the verse 3. Chephaniah chapter 2, verse 3. Seek the Lord, all you humble of the land. Yeah, seek the Lord, all humble of the land. And you who do what is He command. Seek righteousness and seek humility. Two things. What you need to do? Seek righteousness and Seek humility. These two things you have to seek. Seek righteousness, seek humility. Yeah. And you have to do it. 
perhaps you will be sheltered and on the day of Lord's anger. Perhaps. When God says perhaps, it's possible for you. If you seek righteousness and seek humility, the mercy of the Lord protect you and redeem you. It's not wonderful news. And then verse 7, yeah, Tephaniah chapter 2 verse 7, I will belong to the remnant of the house of, I'm sorry, not how, it will, it will belong to the remnant of the house of Judah. There they will find a pastor. You know, every area there is some remnant. Every country is remnant. Do you remember what Elijah said to God? I'm the only one to jealous for you and worshiping God. And then everybody died. Only me I left. What can I say? <laughs> I I I keep the seven thousand who are not bowed down, worship the idols and powers and Asera. Who keep them? God keep the, this, uh, God reserve the, these 7,000 people. And then this is very important, that is a term remnant. Even all the churches are destroyed uh, because of Satan, you know, Satan damaged the churches by, you know, the secularism. And then prosperity gospel, prosperity gospel, and then also the doctrine of LGBTQ. Mm -hmm. All these things is a damage the church, but still God keep the remnant, and that is a remnant, yeah. And God will guide them, and they will find the pastor, green grass. In the evening they will lie down in the house of Ascalon. The Lord their God will care for them. He will restore their fortunes. You see, the Lord your God will care for you. Isn't that wonderful? If you are a remnant, if you are a seek righteousness and seek humility, it's so important. Yeah? And look at the verse 8. I have heard the insult of Moab and the Taunt of the Amorite, uh, who insulted my people and made a threat against their land. Do you see the Moab? Who is a who is a Moab's a father and mother? Moab, Moab, Ammon's generation come from Lot, 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 and his two daughters, Moab and Amorite. Yeah, and then you see. God see that I saw them, they insult you, they persecute you, they are against you. Look, therefore, as surely as I live, declares the Lord Almighty, God of Israel, surely more will become what? Like uh, Sodom. Mm -hmm. And I'm right like what? Gomorrah. Mm -hmm. What was happening to Sodom and Gomorrah? Do you know that? Brimstone and how they destroyed. Yeah. Right. Where did this fire come from? Heaven. From heaven. Can you imagine fire come from heaven and burn? Burned all the animals and human beings and then even stones and trees, everything is melt. Where is the Sodom and Gomorrah now? Uh, Anybody knows? On the edge of the dead sea. Yeah, under the dead sea. You know that? Have you been to the dead sea? Yeah, yeah next time you go there. Yeah? And then when you go to Israel, please buy the return ticket. No, go there single. <laughs> <laughs> because he went to Israel with a single ticket, that is why Israel came on the Sunday back to England. <laughs> yeah, we <laughs> a few years ago he went to Israel with a single ticket. If you go to single ticket, do you know what they thought you, you they thought you are remain in Israel? Yeah. And uh, you gonna stay in Israel illegally. That is why in the beginning they don't want to keep you. I, I still remember, do you know what happened? In Tel Aviv, Tel Aviv is the capital city for, for at the moment, uh, officially. But we know that Jerusalem is the capital city. I was preaching. There's uh, five churches in a big building. All the African churches, Nigerian church, Ghanaian church. I was preaching in one church. And do you know what the pastor say? Normally, normally 80 members, but today, around 15 members. I said, what happened? 
Then what happened? Thirty people, they stay in Israel illegally. That is why the police come. Then what happened? There's a five churches in the one building, all the black churches. And then they, they, are, they are the watchmen from the corner of the building. When the Israel police come and uh, they make a noise, oh, coming, coming, and then, and then these people run away. They run away. I never seen in my life. Can you imagine? All around 80 people, members, but 30 people stay in Israel illegally. That is why the Israel police, uh, they come to church in the, during the service time. <laughs> to catch them and uh, send, yeah, send them to their home country. But I don't know why I speak however good here. <laughs> Look, the Lord God will care for them. According to Jephaniah chapter 2, verse 7. And then um, God will destroy the Sodom and Gomorrah. Uh, and, uh, I'm sorry, God will destroy the Moab and Ammon generation because of their sins. And then look, these people, they have place of wheat and salt. What is salt pit? Yeah, salt pit, wasteland forever. The remnant of my people will plunder them. The survivors of my nation will inherit their land. And um, whenever I go to Dead Sea, I swim. I went to the Dead Sea with the Bible. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine how 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 can I read the Bible on the water? Well, it's very salty, so you can go back and go back. Yeah, I I open my Bible on the water and relax and meditate the Word of the Lord. Especially whenever I go to Dead Sea, I open the Book of Genesis, how God destroyed the Sodom and Gomorrah. And when I meditate the Scripture on the water. I pray to God, Lord, help me. I don't want to disobey your will. I don't want to disobey your word. And then um, I just uh, think about the Sodom and Gomorrah under the, my, under the, my back, <laughs> under the uh, water, mm -hmm. Dead Sea. There's no uh, fish in the Dead Sea. Mm -hmm. And then, do you know what's different between the Sea of Galilee and Dead Sea? Anybody knows? Yeah? There's no red light. No, no light. Yeah, that's right. You know that. That is the only receiving, receiving, receiving yeah. from the, the yeah. Sea of Galilee. Yeah. Sea of Galilee, the, where is the, where is the water come from the, to Sea of Galilee? Mountain Helmo. Helmo Mountain. You know, Helmo Mountain is snow and snow melt. And if you go to the, the Kaisara Philippi, yeah, on the bottom of a Helma mountain, there's a full of water, with a little small waterfall. Water coming continually. Why? Because of the snow melt and go in under the mountain Helma. The first uh, uh, the fountain of the water for Sea of Galilee from the mountain Helma. How many high? How many meters high about uh, Helma mountain? Two thousand eight hundred. 2,884, 2, something like that. You can Google it, you can see it, I, hopefully I remember. It's the highest mountain in the Middle East. And then I think it's, uh, I, I, I suppose to go to Israel this year, February, but I received an email from the airline company, oh, there is a war start, and then we cannot fly. And they want to refund over ten people booking, and then ten people receive the refund the money because they cannot fly. Mm -hmm. And then, but in God's time, we bid it to the Israel again. But look, what God said, look at verse 11, Sephaniah chapter 2, verse 11 the Lord will awesome to them when he destroy all the God of the land. What kind of God? All idols. We got these old idols in the land. The nation on every shore will worship him. Everyone in his own land. Do you know God is a jealous God. God, God will destroy the old idols. Old idols. And then you can come before the land worshiping God. 
Look at the chapter 3, Jephaniah chapter 3. Jephaniah chapter 3, this is very important. Yeah? Verse 2. She obey no one. Who is she? Jerusalem. Jerusalem. When you see the she and her, yeah, the land of Jerusalem is like female, you know, the gender, yeah. When you say the she, she obey no one. She accept no cons uh, uh, corrections. Mm -hmm. This is the main main problem. When God correct you, you must uh, you must uh, receive the correction. Yeah, you know, I know some people they don't like the correction. And then they learn away. Also, she does not trust in the law. This is the main problem. She does not trust in the law, but they trust in all other idols. She does not do near to her God. This is the main problem. They don't come near to God. Do you understand? You have to come near to God. You have to trust in God. You have to obey God. You have to accept the, His correction. And when God corrects you, when God rebukes you, you need to say, Yes, Lord. Amen. You need to receive it. Otherwise, you will be troubled. And look at the, her prophet. Who are the, her prophet? Yeah, prophet in Jerusalem, prophet of Israel, are uh, one arrogant. This we call the false prophet. Eh? False prophet is not telling the truth. The arrogant, they are uh, treacherous men. What does mean treacherous men? Yeah, yeah. Not trustworthy. Yeah. Do you know this kind of people and her priest uh, perform the sanctuary and do violence to the law. And then this is uh, the main problem. And then look at the verse 6. I have cut off the nations. Their strongholds are demolished. I have left their street uh, deserted with no one passing through. Their cities are destroyed. No one will be left. No one at all. Yeah. I say to the city, surely you will fear me. Accept the correction. Can you say Amen? amen. Fear of the Lord is what? Fear. Beginning of wisdom. You have to fear God. And then you have to accept His correction. When I correct the brother John over there, and then he say, thank you, first I change, you change, do you remember? That is why you, you have been here over, over one year now, well done. Yeah. You know, some people not accept the correction, and then they left. Then her dwelling would not be cut off, nor my punishment come upon her, but they will still, they were still ang uh, eager, eager to act, act uh, uh, corruptly in their deed. Therefore, wait for me, declares the Lord. For the day I will stand up and to testify. I have decided to assemble to the nations and gather the kingdoms and to pour out my wrath on them, all my foolish anger. The whole world will be consumed by the fire of jealous anger. What is the fire of jealous anger? Fire of jealous anger. And this fire of jealous anger consumed all the people. Do you know? God destroyed the whole world because of what? They committed the sins. Eh? People so wicked, so wicked. God killed all of them. Do you know what can say he neglect why I made a human being? Can you imagine? He made everything. When he God made everything, it was good. It was good. But when God he, when God saw these people so wicked, and he neglected, why I made them? And then again, do you know that when God saw the Sodom and Gomorrah, especially people in Sodom and Gomorrah, do you know the, what the Bible says? Sodom and Gomorrah is look like what land of what? Garden of. Eden. It's a very nice land. But people are wicked. Because the people are wicked, what happened? God sent the fire. 
This fire is what? Fire will got you jealous. Do you know what they say? By the fire of my jealous anger, burn the kid. Yeah. Excuse me. Can I ask a question? Yeah. What are you talking about now? What is before Noah's ark or after? No. Noah's after the Noah's ark. Noah's ark was Noah was the first time. Time. What? what? Noah was flood. Yeah, Noah is a flood. Yeah, you know, Noah is much, much earlier than, than Abraham. Abraham was a six, four thousand, no, from now on until uh, Abraham time. How many years ago? Around the four thousand years. How, 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 how about the Noah's time? How old Noah's? Around the six thousand time. Yeah, around uh, 6,000 years ago, Noah's time, yeah. And then, you know, main thing is, it actually, this, this thing is very, very simple. When you, when you need a Bible, yeah? When you need a Bible, when people disobey God, wrath of them come. When they obey God, favor of them come. Do you know, like, conditionally? Do you know that Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy chapter 28? Deuteronomy chapter 28 about what? Obedience, obedience. obedience. If you obey, you receive the blessing. blessing. The verse 1 to 14. If you disobey, how many, how many curses? Then you look at Deuteronomy chapter 28. People, they don't want to read from verse 15. Deuteronomy chapter 28, yeah, after 15, terrible punishment, terrible curses. That is why you can see the more curses in this world than blessings. Do you know how many blessings? Matthew chapter 20, verse 1 to 14, yeah? Curses, curses for disobedience, how many? From verse 15 to when? And the end? 68. How many times? 68 minus 14, how many? Yeah? Yeah, yeah, this is almost four times, uh, uh, four times uh, bigger. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine six to eight uh, divided uh, fourteen? Yeah, around the five times, mm -hmm. around the five times more curse than blessing. When when you receive a blessing, when you obey God, it's a conditionally, conditionally. It's a very interesting. Do you know God loves everybody unconditionally? We know that, yeah. Yeah, do you, can you listen carefully? You, you receive the love, yeah? You receive the love unconditionally. While we are still sinners, God demonstrates His love. Christ Jesus died on the cross for our sins. Romans chapter 5, verse 8. You receive the love unconditionally. Everybody, Christian or non Christian, yeah? But blessing is different. Blessing is what? Conditionally. Can I say again? Love of Jesus. Yeah, come upon us unconditionally. We know that. But blessing of the Lord come upon us, how? Conditionally. conditionally. How do I know? Look at the Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 1 to 8. Can you look at the Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 1 to, 8, 1 to 14? It's amazing. You know, people, they enjoy the, the blessing of the Lord. Deuteronomy chapter 28, blessings for obedience. Conditionally. If, if means conditionally, yeah? If you fully obey the Lord your God, fully, 100%. There's three kinds of obedience. Number one, obey God instantly. Number two, obey 100%. Number three, <coughs> obey continuously. How many kinds of obedience? Number one, obey immediately. Number two, obey 100%. If you obey God 99%, you still <coughs> diso disobey, you still disobey. Do you think it's 99% or 99.9% you obey, disobey God or disobey? <coughs> disobey. Can I say something? You're almost born again. You're almost born again. Do you think almost <coughs> born again Christian go to heaven or hell? Hell. 
I'm so sorry. Almost the born again, still go to hell. Almost a Christian, still go to hell. 100%. Okay, look. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 1. If you fully obey the Lord your God and carefully follow all his command I give you today, the Lord your God will set you <coughs> high above all the nation on earth. All this blessing will come upon you and accompany you if you obey the Lord your God. Yeah? It's a conditionally you receive a blessing. Love of Jesus unconditionally, we know that. But blessing of the Lord, yeah, conditionally. Look, verse 3. You will be blessed in the city and blessed in the country because you obey God. Yeah? The fruit of your womb will be blessed and the crops of your land and the young of your livestock, the calves of your herd and the lambs of your flocks, your basket and your kneading um, will be blessed. You will be blessed when you come in and blessed when you go out. How wonderful. All these things is conditionally God bless you. Though the Lord grant that the enemies who raise up against you will be defeated before you. They will come at you from one direction but flee from you in seven directions. Lord God will bless you in the land He is giving you. Yeah, this blessing, blessing, blessing. If you obey, if you obey conditionally. Therefore, Uh, do you know, Brother Patrick is in heaven now. Patrick and myself, one, one option is uh, disagree. I say to him, God loves everybody unconditionally. He said, no, no. He said, God loves uh, people conditionally. Conditionally, he said. I said, God loves unconditionally. Do you know what is the unconditional love is? How can you call it? What kind of love? Unconditional love. Agape love. Have you heard about agape love? There's seven kinds of love in, in Greek. Agape love is unconditional love. Yeah. And then, can you love your children unconditionally? Yes? Even your children are against you, upset you, you know, mock you, whatever. Yeah? Which means non-ending. Yeah. Agape, agape love is... Uh, You know, even you upset me, you hurt me, and still I love you. That is uh, agape love. Mm -hmm. When Jesus asked Peter, do you truly love me? And that means Jesus asked Peter, do you truly love me with agape love, unconditionally? Yeah? Mm -hmm. And then Peter said, I love you. You know that I love you. Mm -hmm. And uh, what kind of love he say? Pileo love. Mm -hmm. Pileo love is a friendship love. Friendship. Friendship love is not strong love. Friendship love usually is sometimes according to circumstance or condition, you can finish the, your relationship. But Jesus asked Peter, do you truly love me with agape love? Peter answered him, I love you with a pillar of love, friendship love. And then Jesus stepped down. Do you know what Jesus said? Do you truly love me with a pillar of love? <laughs> Peter said, yeah, you know that I, I love you. I love you with a pillar of love. Three times uh, Peter gave the same answer. I love you with a pillar of love, pillar of love, pillar of love. But Jesus asked three questions. Number one, do you love me with agape love? And then Jesus changed his mind. Do you love me with a pillar of love? And pillar of love. Two. One is agape love. One, two is a pillar of love. In the book of John chapter uh, 21 speak about these things. But according to the scripture, blessing come upon you conditionally. Then I saw Brother Stewart transform a lot. Over one year ago is a very bad condition. I saw that. Do you know? Conditionally God bless him. Mm -hmm. I saw the Brother Mark now. Do you know you are you are you are like a saint. You are a saint. You know I thanks for the, your life transform. Because of meditate the word of God. Thanks is one cool, Pastor. That's yeah? what I'm saying. Thanks, 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 one is cool. Yeah. It doesn't mean it's especially good. It's yeah. Wonderful. You know, all the darkness is going away from your life. Right, right. 
all the darkness and then you know, anything, no things of the Lord gone away from your life. Therefore, I can see a uh, holy life. I can see the righteous life. I can see the blessing of the Lord in your life. Not because you are doing well, but because of grace of God. Amen. Only, only grace of God. Yeah, you don't need to boast about anything. No. Just uh, only by the grace of God. Amen. Only by the grace of God. Last Sunday, just I just I recommended three people, you and another two ladies, and the congregation party. <laughs> of course, two ladies over sixty but they need to be over 70 percent. Can you imagine? Because over 60 percent, they cannot be ordained on Sunday. But you are 82 percent, which means, you know, most of the congregation, they say yes for Brother Mark to be a leader in our church. They, you know, congregation look like they don't see you, but they see. They know what you are doing faithfully to, to serving God. So do you understand? You don't try to please men. If you try to please men, you know, there's no end. If I try to please this man, Gu Guan, you know, human being is always like the wave of sea, up and down. Do you understand? If, you, if I try to please you, one day you, you feel is very bad. No good day on that day. How can I please you on that day? If whatever I say, you may be angry with me. Do you understand? <laughs> Therefore, don't try to please man. <laughs> Can you say amen? amen. Please in Jesus, amen. amen. Only, only Jesus. Please, I beg you, brother. Please in Jesus, yeah? Yeah, but according to the Bible, yeah. God wants human beings on condition. Yeah? Because there have been so many punishments from God, people yeah. have been killed and so on and so forth. Yeah. It's punishment for their disobedience. That is, that, is that is a blessing. That is why, do you know, four kind of things you have to choose. Do you know what God say? Now, you have to choose among the four. Can you look at the Deuteronomy? Deuteronomy, you already Deuteronomy, chapter 30, uh, 31. Oh, you can see the Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 19. Can you see that? It's a good question. A lot of people, they receive the punishment and yeah, got to anger. Not because God is willing to kill them, but because of, of this of that conditionally. Brother, can you read it? Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 19. This day, I call the heavens and the earth as witnesses against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. May choose life so that you and your children may live. Thank you. Can you see the four things in front of you? What's the number one? Number one? Life. Life. And number two? Death. Death. Number three? Blessing. Blessing. Number four? Curses. Curses. You need to choose life and blessings. blessings. Do you understand? You have to choose the life and blessing. Don't choose the death and curse. It, it's up to you. You gathering together with me to choose what? Life and blessing. You are in here. Do you understand? That is why plan of Satan what? Steal, kill, destroy. Yeah? Plan of Satan steal, kill and destroy. Yeah. Look at the uh, look at the verse fifteen, Deuteronomy chapter thirty, verse fifteen says, "See, I set before you today life and prosperity, death and destruction." Yeah, and then verse sixteen, for I command you today to love the Lord your God, to walk in His ways, to keep His command, the decree and law. Then you live and increase, and the Lord your God will bless you in the land you are entering to possesses. Do you understand? You have to you have to choose life and blessings. What does it mean life what does it mean choose life and blessing? What does it mean? Oh, oh, obey, obey, obey. Simple. Simple. This is a conditional conditional offer <coughs> for life Life and then death and the blessing curses, this is a conditional offer. You have to choose 
life and blessing. How? Obey. Obey is up to you. If you disobey, you choose what? Death and curse. Wage of sin is what? Death. What is the what is the what is the what is the, our standard uh, rule and regulation? The law. Ten commandment. Thank you very much. Ten commandment. You know the ten commandment. Do not steal. Do not commit adultery. Do not give the false uh, testimony, false witness. Do not cover to your neighbors. And uh, do not kill. Yeah. Do you know this ten? If you keep the ten commandment, yeah, by the helping of the Holy Spirit. You will receive the blessing of the Lord automatically. Can you say Amen? Mm-hmm. I'm telling you. Yeah, in, in short, it says, "Do unto others as you have said them to do unto you." Yeah, you see, you'll be blessed, brother. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, uh, you to the mission YM, they say that there's a generous ge- ge- generation curses. Why they say generation curses? Because of God. Look at the Deuteronomy chapter 28. According to this scripture, they say that this is a generation curse. Then Deuteronomy chapter 28. And then, and then. Which scripture is a three and four generation? Mm, 12 to 18. Yeah. Which one? Yeah, I think it's uh, even, uh, sorry, I made a mistake. Uh, Exodus chapter 20. Exodus chapter 20. Yeah. And then um, verse, uh, verse 5. Exodus chapter 20, verse 5 is about the Ten Commandment. You shall not bow down to them or worshiping them, for I, the Lord your God, am jealous God. Punish the children for the sins of their father. Can you see that? Punish their children for the sins of their father. They said this is a generation curse. <coughs> because of father's sin, and then children get punishment. And then to the third and fourth generation of those who are hate me. Can you imagine if somebody hates God, Three or fourth generation received the curse, what God said in the Ten Commandment. Moses he received this commandment. But very interesting, verse 6. Verse 6. But, but showing love to thousands of generations of those who love me and keep my command. How many generations? Can you calculate 1,000 uh, minus 3 and 4? How many? <laughs> One of them four generations turn again to me, yeah. I will forgive them. Yeah. Then, uh, uh, of course, the scriptures say, Father sins, and father sin. Yeah. Father sin, get the father, get the punishment, not for children. <coughs> no. Do you know, that is a big argument. Why I say to you, do you know, this is a generation curse. This is a generous question. For my understanding, I explain to you. If a mother is a prostitute's mother, she gets a daughter. When then she keeps uh, her job prostitutes another 20 or 30 years, this daughter saw mommy all the time, what she does. And then what happened? Daughter become prostitutes easily. Why? Because what she see, what she saw, and she what she get. Because she saw the customer of her, of her mother. Do you understand? How do I know? I look. I I met many prostitutes in in this area, and the prostitutes' daughter also, you know, prostitutes. Do you understand? That is why the mother's sin, yeah, not stop here. And then that sins go to the next generation. Do you understand? But if you say, oh, prostitute's job is uh, one of the job, 
Oh, I cannot say anymore because someone speak like that. I understand what this meaning. But uh, if uh, if a father is a drug dealer, for example, if a father is a drug dealer, selling the drug and make money and then drinking alcohol or drugs or whatever, and the child see his father what he does all the time in the room and then selling the drugs. And then he always learn from his father's uh, example. Therefore, the curse come upon next generation. We call the generation curse. Because the father's sin, no stop it. But good news is, if a son become born again, yeah? if the, the drug dealer's son, drug addict's son, alcoholic's son, or prostitute's son, or a daughter, they become born again. What you want to have fun? Free. Cut off, cut off, free. cut off. We are free. Not only for themselves, even father's uh, dinner addiction. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. That is a very, very good news. Therefore, we have to preach the gospel in season and out of season. And then, I know the one guy. His father was a, when his father was thirty-four. He took his father took the heroin and then on the chair he fell on the floor. He died. Can you imagine thirty-four years old man? Young men die, 34 young. And uh, he told me, he become homeless. I met him in the our church car park around the seven years, six years ago, six, seven years ago. I met him, I preached the gospel. Do you know how long he stayed in our church? He stayed in our church for two years in here. Mm -hmm. I don't want to mention the name. He is studying in our church and meditate and he met with the Korean missionary. They have two children now. Oh. You know who they're talking about there. Yeah. She knows. Mm. Can you imagine? If he if he not meet with me, he already he was mm. alcoholic. Mm. He followed his father's step. But he met me and he received the gospel of Lord Jesus, he started a new life. He's not wonderful. But the, this is how God is working. Mm -hmm. Therefore, you preach the gospel for 11 souls and give their life to Jesus. Mm -hmm. And then when they give their life to Jesus, please tell them, do you have the Bible? They, most of the people, they say, yeah, I have the Bible. Please read the book of John tonight when you go back to home. But before you go to bed, please kneel down and pray and talk to the Jesus. They say, yes, I will. Actually, I, I preached the gospel for young girls. They promised me that they want to do it tonight. Did you understand? Therefore, uh, we saw the, some generation curses uh, uh, in the actual actual life. But instead of, gen of course, uh, we we know that uh, the the Bible. No, I can give you some scripture. Some scripture say, "Father's sin is father's sin." Do you understand? Children sin, children sin. And then, um, if you look at the book of Ezekiel, chapter 18, verse 20. If you have the, your note, you can write that. Book of Ezekiel, chapter, chapter 18, verse 20. And some other theologian against the generation curse according to this scripture. Gen uh, uh, book of Ezekiel chapter chapter eighteen verse twenty say I can read for you the soul who sins is the one who will die. The son who not share the guilt of the father. Can you see that? Nor will the father share the guilt of the son. The righteousness of righteous man will be credited to him. The weakness of the wicked will be will be charged against him. Do you understand? According to the scripture, you know, one man's sin and not share with somebody. What, got, what the book of Ezekiel chapter 18 verse 20. But we saw the book of Exodus chapter 20. Do you know the sins of a father go to the next generation to curse for three or fourth generation? It's like DNA, isn't it? Yeah. In the blood. 
Uh, I don't mm. want to say the uh, <laughs> DNA. I say the, the like the habit. Habit. Do you understand? You know your habit, uh, brother John. Your habit uh, maybe play the cricket. Yeah, cricket. Baby. It's nothing. Not come to think play the cricket. But children, they see you or my daddy and my grandfather play the cricket very well. Mm -hmm. Therefore, children learn from from you mm -hmm. since young young child, and then play the cricket, and then who knows they become a famous, uh, you know, player for the nations, something like that. Therefore, um, best teaching, best teaching for your children is uh, example. Example. You know, for myself, I'm a pastor in that church. If I don't read the Bible, if I don't pray, if I don't evangelize, how can I say to the congregation, let us, you have to pray in your room. You have to read the Bible. You know, if I don't do it, I speak like this, I'm a hypocrite. Do you understand? Therefore, best way, best way to teaching for your children, show the example. Example is the best teaching. Example. You don't need to say to uh, your children, you must become a generous uh, uh, giver. Giving generously, voluntarily, willingly. You don't need to say to them. Of course, you can say, but uh, you do it. Your children learn from you. Do you understand? Oh, my mom always, uh, you know, well done. You always uh, open the door for some some brothers, sisters. Thank you so much. You know, that is a great blessing. Okay. Okay. Can you go back to the book of Jephaniah? We're gonna we're gonna finish uh, shortly. And uh, chapter three. Book of Jephaniah, chapter 3, is a very, very important uh, scripture. Book of Jephaniah, uh, chapter 3, verse 10. Let's say, uh, sorry, let's say verse 9. Jephaniah, chapter 3, verse 9. Then will I purify the lips of the peoples, that all, the, all of them may call on the name of the Lord, and serve him shoulder to shoulder. Yeah. Jephaniah chapter 3 verse 9. Can I encourage you? God say, I purify the lips of the people, and all of them call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. God will purify your lips in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And then and you can serve Him. And then look at the verse 11. On that day, Whenever you say on the day, that means a God restoration. You will not to be, you will not be put to shame for all the wrongs you have done to me. Yeah, God remember everything but God said, you know, because I will remove from this city those who rejoice in their pride. Never again we will you be lofty on my holy hills. But I will leave you with you and make the humble who trust in the name of the Lord. Yeah, we have to trust in the name of the Lord. God is uh, gentle and humble. Yeah? Jesus said, learn from me. I am what? Gentle and humble. Look at the verse 14. Sing, O daughter of Zion. Shout loud, O Israel. Be glad and rejoice with all your heart, O daughter of Jerusalem. Yeah, be glad and rejoice. The Lord has taken away your punishment. Can you say amen? amen? The Lord has taken away your punishment. It's good news. He has turned back uh, your enemy. And the Lord, the King of Israel, is with you. Can you say amen? amen. Yeah. Will never again will you uh, fear any harm. On that day, they will say to Jerusalem, Do not fear, O Zion. Do not let your a hand uh, a hang limb. Verse 70 is very important. If you have the Bible, if your Bible you can underline, please memorize it. Jephaniah chapter 3 verse 70 is the most important scripture. And uh, the Lord your God is with you. Can you say amen? amen. He is a mighty Savior. Can you say amen? amen? And God will, look, God will take a great delight in you. Yeah? God will take a delight in you. 
and uh, God will quiet uh, you uh, with his love. He will rejoice over you with, uh, with what? With the singing. Who, who's singing? God, yes. God, can you imagine? <laughs> Is it, can, you can you imagine? God will rejoice over you with the singing. Do you know that? The Bible speaks God is singing. Yeah? God will sing. Yeah, God will, God will sing over you. God will rejoice over you with the singing. Do you understand? And I, today I think I missed the brother Patrick. When Patrick enjoyed the food, uh, he humming, uh, humming, mm -hmm, like it's <laughs> The, the sound they come from his uh, mouth. And then, do you know, another word, yeah? This is a God saying, I love you, and I'm well pleased with you. That thing, things. Can you look at uh, Matthew chapter 3? Anybody remember when Jesus received the water baptism? The boys come down from heaven. What can I say? Verse 17, Matthew 3, 17. Matthew three seventeen, the boys come from heaven saying, This is my this is my son whom I love, which is I'm you are my beloved son and with him I am well pleased, you see. Verse seventeen. Matthew three verse seventeen, yeah? Matthew three seventeen, same thing. So Japanese three seventeen. Can I say again? Matthew three seventeen, Japanese three 17, same meaning. When God yeah, saw his son Jesus receive water baptism in River Jordan, who gave the water baptism for Jesus? John the Baptist. And then God opened the gate of heaven. Matthew 3, verse 17. A voice from heaven saying, This is my son whom I love. With him I am well pleased. Look at uh, Jephaniah chapter 3, verse 17. The Lord God say, uh, I'm very great delight in you, which I'm very happy with you. And then, do you know, God say, uh, I, I love you. I love you. Yeah, I love you. With, he quiet with you, or you, he quiet you with his what? His love. His love. Same meaning. I'm well pleased with you. You are my beloved son and daughter. And then look, verse uh, 19. At the time I will deal with all who oppress you, I will rescue the lamb, and then gather those who have been scattered. I will give them praise and honor in every land where they were put to shame. Can you imagine? People, they praise you, people will, will honor you. No more shame. Amen. At the time I will gather you, at the time I will bring you home. I will give you honor and praise again. And verse 19 say, I will give them praise and honor. <coughs> and verse 20, I will give you honor and praise among the, all the people of the earth when I restore your fortunes before your very eyes. God will give you honor and praise. Yeah, this is now wonderful news. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the book of Jephaniah, chapter 1, 2, 3. And then this is a wonderful scripture. God say to us, you are my beloved children. I am well pleased with you. I am, uh, I will rejoice over you with the singing. Would you bless your children right now? In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Give the cloud for him, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord.